Ah, there you are. I apologize for calling you in so suddenly. Please, sit. There is a matter I would like to discuss with you. I believe I've told you this before, but it is my responsibility to aid the Archbishop in all her duties. What are these duties? Spiritual instruction, ceremony oversight, donation management, all of the church's many administrative tasks. I oversee not only the priesthood, but also the Knights of Seros and the Officers Academy. The Archbishop entrusts a great deal to my discretion, and I am honored by her confidence. Even when she must make decisions herself, she often seeks my counsel in advance. And yet, your appointment to a teaching position at the Officers Academy was a complete surprise to me. Not only that, but you have also been entrusted with the Sword of the Creator. I was as surprised as anyone else to learn that. Frankly, I am just not sure how to handle you. I am the Archbishop's right hand, and yet when it comes to you, I have been told almost nothing. You don't trust me. Even though we just did a mission that made you trust me. Not quite. I do find you to be a trustworthy individual, but my subjective opinion is not enough. I have a duty to be cautious. Should the Archbishop's trust in you prove to be misplaced, it is the faithful who will suffer most. First, I would like to know just how much you know about yourself. You are the child of Geralt Eisner, correct? I like how ambiguous these answers are. Which I think further sets in stone that we're actually not his child. I mean, we have green hair. He doesn't. Uh, that's what I hear. That's quite a vague reply for such a basic question. In the future, I would advise you to answer such queries with confidence. As the former captain of the Knights of Seros, Geralt is renowned throughout Fodlan. If you really are his child, then no one would voice any complaint about you joining the Knights. How long has it been since you became a mercenary? About ten years, I think. Given your youth, that hardly seems likely. Come to think of it, I have never asked your age. Just how old are you exactly? Well, um... Your face says it all. You truly don't know, do you? Just what was Gerald thinking, raising you this way? Given your responses thus far, I feel as though any further questions would just be a waste of our time. However, permit me to make one thing clear. Whatever her reasons, the Archbishop has placed great faith in you. Do not betray that trust. That is all. Thanks, dog. <clears throat> this is the only ball of the year, and I see why. Everyone is absurdly excited. Your Highness, you sound so detached. We are all encouraged to enjoy the ball tomorrow. <sighs> right you are. What a burden. Huh. I never thought we'd see eye to eye, but I agree. I'd rather be swinging my blade than wasting my time with some girl at a ball. Felix! Your Highness! You must be joking, right? This is our chance to dance with all of the ladies of the Academy to our heart's content. You wish to throw away the best day of the whole year for sword practice? Insanity, I tell you! I'm pretty excited about the ball myself. It's not like we get to do things like this very often. Too true, Ash. In fact, I'm going to do you a favor and give you a crash course in chatting up girls. By tomorrow, you'll be an expert. Actually, I'd much prefer if someone could just teach me how to dance. Don't worry about the dancing part. I can teach you that easy. It's time for the ball. That warrants at least a tiny bit of makeup, don't you think, Ingrid? Just a smidge? I... Hmm. Maybe. I'll think about it. It's settled. Tomorrow morning, we'll meet up in Ingrid's room. Ooh, I can't wait! <laughs> you know, there's no telling where life will take us after we leave here. If only we could find a way to come together again, just like this. 
A fine notion, your highness. Perhaps five years from now? Five years from now? Ah, that's when Garrig Mach Monastery will be holding its Millennium Festival. By then, we'll be addressing your highness as your majesty instead. That's right. I suppose we all know it's coming, but by then you'll be far removed from us. Come now, you know me better than that. My title may change, but I won't. And it won't just be me, you know. Five years from now, you'll all have your own stuffy positions to contend with. But as I understand it, the festivities at the Millennium Festival will be of a scale far beyond anything we've yet seen. In other words, the perfect excuse for all of us to return here. Ooh, a reunion? That sounds fun! I wouldn't miss it for the world! I'd love for you to be there as well, Professor. After all, you're the heart of the Blue Lion House. I'll be there. Good. Then it's settled. Of course, if something happens and I'm not able to attend, I'm leaving all of the logistics of organizing this reunion to you, Professor. Yeah, you have to attend. This was your idea, sucker. It's true. I'm sure being a king will keep you busy, but it's a bit early to be backing out of your own plans, don't you think? Yes, I suppose you're right. I'm sorry. You have my word. I will return as well. Count on it. Running away? I understand. You hardly had the time to breathe in there. It must be hard to be the favorite teacher at the ball. <laughs> poor, poor professor. It is rough times. <clears throat> it is difficult to be the most amazing person at this monastery. So you do think you're the favorite? <laughs> might have known. Professor, what are you doing here? No, I should think not. As a child, Edelgard taught me how to dance. It was a bit awkward, honestly. I've told you before that we're siblings by marriage, haven't I? Her birth mother was my stepmother, although I didn't know that at the time. My stepmother treated me with such kindness, just as though I were her own flesh and blood. And yet she never so much as hinted that she had her own child, Edelgard. We were born and raised in different territories without ever knowing the other even existed. Yet, against all odds, for just over a year, we became childhood friends. Indeed. Unaware of each other's stations or backgrounds, we met and became incredibly close. This was when she and Lord Arundel were living in the kingdom. They were in exile. This was a time of great turmoil within the Empire. I ran into her when visiting Lord Arundel's residence with my father. 
she seemed quite bored with everything. At first, I found her to be difficult and stubborn. But that facade quickly fell away, revealing her true self beneath. That's around the time when she taught me how to dance. Her instruction was, though, let's call it strict, to put it nicely. Wrong foot, Dimitri. You're supposed to lead with your right. Hell, the sun's going down. I really ought to be heading home. That one year before she had to return to the Empire was... so much fun. The time of my life, in many ways. It's kind of pathetic to think about it all these years later. But can you guess what I gave her as a parting gift? Huh. Good guess, Professor. But I swear, it came from the heart. In Fargus, we've long considered blades as tools of destiny, as a way to cut a path to a better future. She was being dragged all over, unable to live the life she wanted. I thought the dagger could help her cut a path to the future she dreamed of. However, that was many years ago. I'm sure she's forgotten all about the boy I was back then. I'm afraid it's far too late for that. Things are different now. She's different. I'm different. Anyway, I'm feeling a bit out of place here. Festivities like this don't suit me. Still, I suppose I should get back in there. Goodbye, Professor. But where is there to run? This place is filled with joyful students looking for a dance. Ah, I see. The Goddess Tower waits for you. Everybody's been asking about you. You're really popular with the students. Uh, I'm worn out. Oh, really? Huh. Uh, actually, I've been trying to find you too. But if you're not interested in dancing, that's okay. We are supposed to be at a ball, though. If you're not gonna dance tonight, when and where will you get another chance? <clears throat> I don't like this. Is this supposed to be like my my favorite person so far or something like that? That I've bonded with the most? Uh here. Wait, really? There isn't any music. But this is too special to pass up. Maybe I could sing a little something. <laughs> I may not look like it, but I'm a practiced singer. Though, people do tend to think my lyrics are a little odd. Fry the food, it tastes so good. It fills up our hungry tummies. What an interesting song. It's about this yummy stew one of the monks taught me to make a while back. Oh, I know! I'll make it for you! It really is just about the tastiest thing in the world. Uh, if I'm bothering you, please tell me now and I'll leave you alone. You're bothering me. Say, Professor, did you know that if you make a wish here at the Goddess Tower, it will for sure come true? That's why people usually meet up with someone they like here, for a rendezvous. And they make a wish that they'll stay together forever. So, uh, I thought you might be waiting for a girl here. And that I'm messing it up. Um, never heard of that tradition. <laughs> That's just what I'd expect you to say. But since we're already here, let's go ahead and make a wish together. 
What kind of wish? <laughs> I've already decided what it will be. Dearest goddess, I wish for the professor and I to always be the best of friends. How's that sound? Can we wish for that? I'd be happy to. Really? That makes me so happy. Well, I'd better be going now. And you should think about returning to the ball too. But make sure you save me a dance. Annette's definitely not the best girl. I don't even know why they tried forcing her to be the best girl. It seems that everyone is having a delightful time. Will you not dance some more? I'd rather not. How dull of you. Had I a body of my own? Oh, I would sing and dance until I fell upon the ground. But you... <laughs> do as you will. Oh, you're not the only one who feels that way. Look over there. Hmm, I'm bored beyond compare. Will you not follow her? I mean, I have all the reasons to. Why would I? Oh, come on, hurry up. I know that you are curious to see what she is up to. I hear someone singing from over there. song. I feel that I have heard it in the past. Actually, it is not that I have heard it. I... did I once sing that song to someone? No, there's more. I wrote this song. Oh, but how could that be so? If that were true, then how could she be singing it? Unless... No, no. I am suddenly so exhausted. As are you, no doubt. Quickly then, to bed with you. Mercedes, after failing multiple times, can now be a bishop. Thanks for wasting two advanced seals. I don't think I have any advanced seals for this. Um, and sadly, I cannot upgrade you either. It's fine. In all due time. 
Although, no, the the stats are good enough. And we're gonna max out the 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 dancer, the show. Dancer costume actually looks kind of nice. All right, marketplace, battalions, replenish. Item shop just in case. Yep. Uh, blacksmith for repairing. Check it out. That's an expensive one to do. I guess we'll go ahead and uh, do that. And we'll just rock with that. The ports? Yikes. So who are my mains? My mains are basically everybody in the Blue Lions. Uh, yeah. Everyone in OG Blue Lions. Everyone after that is just whatever. All right, let's get these supports. Mercedes, I'm sorry to ask this of you, but will you lend me a hand? What can I do for you? Oh, is the cuff of your overcoat still torn? Mending that shouldn't be a problem at all. It's pathetic, I know, but I fear my sewing skills are... Well, as you can see, they're just about non-existent. Goodness! You must have been concerned when I tore your cuff. Ah, well, that is to say, oh, would you please teach me to sew? I hear you're rather amazing at it. <laughs> of course I'll teach you. Don't look so heartbroken. You will? Thank you. Oh, I owe you for this. I'll go get my sewing kit. You wait here. I'm so sorry, Dimitri. I've never seen, um... Well, it's just a bit... No need to dance around the issue. You're fed up with my clumsy efforts, aren't you? I thought you might end up bending some needles if you tried mending this on your own, but... How did you manage to break a pair of scissors? I'm just... I'm so sorry, really. I try to be careful, but with delicate work like this, I just can't seem to manage. There's no need to apologize. But you must have been uncomfortable making your way here with this tear. My inability to control my own strength is humiliating. Of course I'm useless at needlework. No giving up on yourself. You just have to practice, that's all. No matter how difficult something is, if you keep at it and don't give up, then you're sure to improve. Isn't that what you told me? Right you are. To give in to despair isn't like me. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, I'm ready to give it another go. Great! I'm glad to hear it. First things first, let's make sure the needle is actually threaded this time. No! I bent another one. Why, Lenato? Oh, hey, Felix. I suppose your thoughts are still with Lord Lenato. I'm fine. I'm just frustrated by how little I was able to do. I know he was trying to protect me, but Lenato never really told me anything. In the end, I don't think I understood his feelings at all. You said it yourself. 
Be more moderate in your passions. To me, he always seemed like a knight out of a story. And I was so caught up in my ideals, I turned a blind eye to his sadness, his hatred, even when they were right in front of me. I guess I'm pretty far from real knighthood, huh? Perhaps. Yet knowing someone well does not mean you know how they feel, whether family or friend. To know someone's sorrow and turn blindly from it, that is the act of a fool. But pursuing your ideals is not foolish. But before, you said... I said to be moderate in your passions, not to abandon your ideals. It's okay to be who you are. Thank you. Hearing you say that means a lot. Ah, I almost forgot. You lent me this. Oh, the book I lent you. I'm guessing you hated it? Actually, I already knew the story. My brother used to read it to me all the time. Must have dug up some old feelings, then. I suppose. That's just what I'd expect the knight in the story to say. It's not just the way you talk, either. It's who you are as a person, deep down. <laughs> well, I think you're like the squire in the book. He's only half a knight, but he's bold and gregarious. And he always does his best. Don't stop being that half-knight, okay? You got it. I'll become the kind of knight only I can be. What are all these books doing on the floor? Hey, Cyril, what's going on here? I'm tidying up the library, sweeping the floors, dusting the shelves, restacking the books. Isn't there a schedule for library cleaning duty? Why are you doing all of this by yourself? Oh, I'm helping out the kid whose job it is. He says I'm making him look bad, but I'm just happy to help. Besides, some of these books are valuable. Gotta handle them carefully. Not a lot of people get that. But there are so many. You really think you'll get all this done today? Easy. There's more stuff to do tomorrow, so the library has got to get done today. And I guess you're planning to do all that by yourself, too. Yep. Come on, it'll be dusk soon. Let me help. Nah, it's my job and I'm gonna do it. There is no way one person can shelve all these books before nightfall, Cyril. Like I said, these books need to be handled real careful. Shouldn't you be doing your own thing anyway? This is my job, and I'm gonna do it because I know Lady Rhea expects it done a certain way. I can't just stand here and watch. I won't get in your way, alright? I'll handle this shelf, and you take the next one. Listen, I said I don't need your help. I promise I'll be careful, okay? Let's just get to it. <sighs> Fine. You do over there, I'll do all of this. Got it. <sighs> What a jerk. Let's leave the boy alone, Ash. Bang. That's a heavy sigh. Again. Yeah? That's the sigh of exhaustion after spending the past month apologizing for your behavior to... Well... Everyone. Apologizing? I've been pretty darn restrained lately. If by restraint you mean falling all over yourself to garner the attention of every passing female, then... Yes, you've been quite restrained. Mark my words, the more you hurt people, the more weighty the repercussions will be. Your actions will come around to bite you. Ha! If I get bitten, that's all just part of the game. Heck, I had one girl's brother come after me with a pitchfork. <laughs> if you end up getting maimed or killed by a pitchfork, don't expect me at your funeral. Glenn used to make light of getting hurt, too. Then one day, he got more than hurt. Now he's gone. I'm sorry. I was being... You're right. I know what it did to you when you died. It hurt to see you hurt, and not be able to do anything. When you wouldn't even come out of your room to take care of your horse. 
Nothing affected me the way his passing affected me. Well, I'm happy that you're better. Seeing you out and about helped me relax enough to be able to flirt with girls again. Your predictability is utterly disappointing. When I finally stopped mourning, you know what brought me back? My concern for you. Me? You know you can't get along without me following in your shadow and caring for you. You flirt with anything that has a pulse, offend people left and right, and constantly cause commotions. Huh. The truth really does hurt. Please, Sylvain. Consider your actions before you carry them out. And stop acting so nonchalant about getting hurt or killed. Promise me that. Okay. I promise. Alright. <sighs> okay. Do the mission.